This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, I voted, hopefully contributing to the 538 electoral votes. <laughs> the... <laughs> In one way or the other, you contributed. Uh, Disney is contributing to a more inclusive environment. Um, yeah, apparently, and so is Adobe. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's, uh, let's take that thought right into the future. Um, yeah, hopefully into a future where Dragonlance can thrive again. Hello and welcome to the Richard Misery Podcast. This is <laughs> episode 261 for Thursday, the 22nd of October, 2020. Uh, this is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos. That's Kent. He couldn't hear the music because the sounders are all jackered up. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun show. This is the post third debate uh, bedacle. And we have <laughs> a lot of fun shit to talk about tonight. If you couldn't tell from the <sighs> lovely overrun intro that uh, we just experienced all together. Yes. Oh, what's up, man? Um, like I said in the in the uh, the, the, the 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 yeah the thing, mm. um, I did vote. I voted. I voted. Look, I got my sticker. I voted. You voted for beer. Got it. I voted. Yeah. Um, no, nah, man. Uh, long lines. Long lines are everywhere. Um, so I voted in the place that I voted in 2018. In the place I voted in 2016. Um, in those past two elections, I walked up, signed in, yep. got my ballot, and voted. Yep. Like, no wait whatsoever. Uh, I had about mm, probably right around a 45-minute line uh, to get in to vote. And that's to vote Fine. early. Yeah, that's to vote early. And that's the, that's the point I was going to make. I don't know if it's because we're in Plague World or because we're in a very high voter turnout world. I, I don't know what the, the thing was, but I had an actual wait, which is I'm OK with that, especially being less than an hour wait, because I've, I've heard horror tales of around the country, people waiting for hours and hours on the end to vote. So I am not going to complain for, with my 45 minute wait. Yep. Um, I'm, I don't know. I, I'll wait until day of, uh, I have specific reasons to wait until day of, um, but mm -hmm. I will be waiting until day of, but I will not, I, I've, as I've said before, I will never pass up another opportunity to vote in any election yeah. for anything that I'm aware of ever. Are, are you waiting because um, because you're a traditionalist? You're no. um, you're wanting the experience of the the day, or no? I am waiting because I plan on spending most of the day near the polling place in order to uh, witness, if not attempt to stop any voter uh, discrimination and uh, oh. uh, 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 anti voter turnout kind of thing. Uh, okay, so you so you're there as. I, I hesitate to say activist, but like an observer of the of yes. the event. Yes, primarily an observer. Although uh, my moral compass won't let me stand by if if it's being if if something starts to go down. Interesting. Okay. Of course, All right. My my voting station is a quarter mile from the house, and it's a school. So there's a lot of <laughs> lot of things there that balance out. Uh, yeah. You know uh, what's going on. But yeah, I will I will be definitely voting. Okay, so 538 put out a tool uh, that helps us understand uh, how... Did you look at this? I did briefly, but, but please please uh, catch us up. Like, uh, what, what, what is this tool that was put out? This uh, 538, if you don't know, is run by Nate Silver. He is uh, most famous right now for incorrectly saying that Clinton had a 66% chance of winning in 2016. Uh, they have modified all of their their presumptions in their their uh, their 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 simulations and things like that. This is a tool. Um, man, Scotty's not here, is he? I, I need Scotty <laughs> here so he can copy and paste these uh these links to the chat. Scotty doesn't know <sighs> that feed me. Um, yeah, anyway, <laughs> five thirty came out with a tool. It shows the electoral map with the current polling showing, and then as you can go through and either do all states or just the key states. 
and click who you like in your mind who you think is going to win that particular state and it'll readjust all of their well it'll trim down their 40,000 simulations according mm-hmm. to what you have you know w- which ones you've picked because uh you know w- once you say say Trump wins Pennsylvania there's a bunch of their simulations that include Trump winning or Trump losing Pennsylvania that no longer count according to your uh, you know, you, your selections. So it'll readjust as it goes along. And if you are into statistics, if you're into looking at how like different scenarios play out and kind of, you know, uh, 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 theory crafting the election, this tool is fucking amazing. It is brilliant. And it all changes. I wouldn't call it live because it does take a little bit for the, the page to catch up to the changes you make. Um, mm. In the example I just gave, say Trump. So, like right now, uh, Trump is expected to lose Arizona, uh, sixty-eight to thirty-two. If I pick that he wins Pennsylvania, which is currently sitting at a fourteen percent chance of him winning, but if he does pull through and win Pennsylvania, now look at the map. It turns a lot redder because in situations uh. where he wins Pennsylvania, he also tends to win in a lot of other places. Interesting. So okay. it adjusts all the the forecasts for all the states. Um, it's it's a beautiful, absolutely beautiful uh, web page, and I recommend anybody that likes the theory craft, especially for elections and things like that, go there and just click through and see uh, see what it has to offer. It's pretty remarkable. Yeah. So it's it's projects dot five thirty eight dot com slash trump dash biden dash election dash map. Yes, and that link will of course uh, be in the show notes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, uh, man, dude, I got fucking super fucking stoked this week. So I'm a big fan of Willow. Do you remember Willow yeah. from the, what, late 80s, early 90s? Yep. Uh, late 80s, I think. Um, I, God, I love that movie. So we found out probably close to a year ago that Disney was considering making a Disney plus series Mm -hmm. based on Willow. And that kind of got me excited, but it was like, well, there's a lot of ideas, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, okay, well this week it was solidified. They have signed the director, the writer, the producer. Like it is a thing that's going to happen. Um, Willow as a TV series on Disney plus is going to happen. Ron Howard is involved. Uh, the original writer of the Willow movie is involved. Uh, the actor who plays Willow is involved. Uh, it is like it, it's a go. It's a one hundred percent green go. I am thrilled beyond measure. I cannot freaking wait for this. Is Val Kilmer uh, confirmed? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> I know. No. No. I had Val to Kil- ask. <laughs> yeah, Val Kilmer and Joanne Whaley have not signed on. Um, uh, most of the so like uh, uh, Billy Billy, uh, what's his name? Billy Barty, I think, who played the Great All One, is uh, not confirmed. Like, well, he's dead, so he's he, not going to be on. He's there. confirmed not coming. Yeah, he's he's definitely. Non, no, what am I trying to say? Confirmed n- in the negative, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, but Willow is going to be part of this. It's going to be in the future, right? So the, we're like 35 years or something after the fact in real time when Willow came out. And I think the TV series is going to be in the same timeline, right? So when Willow is an older man. Right. And he's established he was a you know a hero of old. Well, he then, he was what in this in the timeline he was a like a teen, right? He was pretty young. I mean, uh, probably like in his early twenties, I think, because he was a young okay. father. He had two children. He was married. Yeah, yeah. And, and he and, went on his adventure, similar well, to like Bo Baggins going off to you know say save the um you know well he he discovered the ring and then he saved mount erebor and all this other sort of stuff yeah. uh, um, it's very similar warwick story davis line. was the actor that played willow yes and he yeah. was also wicked in 
in Return of the Jedi. Yeah. So, uh, thank you, Kilford, for for bringing that to light. That that name had completely slipped me as well. Um, speaking yeah. of Disney, uh, this was going to be our main story until something else happened that we're far more interested in uh, personally. Although this would probably have a bigger impact uh, generally for the general populace of of, of America, at least. Yeah. Disney Films is now labeling their classic movies. They have been labeling them for a while um, with a very small label. Uh, let's see, where, where was it? Um, yeah, so, so you, this, went to the, you went to the movie description. You would see uh, this movie might contain... I have it, I have it. Okay, this this program is presented as originally created. It may contain outdated cultural depictions. That's what was in there in the description. Right, right, yeah. Now, yeah. now when you start the movie, it's a banner that comes over the page. Like you can't avoid seeing it unless you know just want to yes. skippity do fast past, past it. This program includes negative depictions and or mistreatment of people or, or cultures. These stereotypes were then and are wrong now, which I think is a typo, but rather than remove this content, we want to acknowledge its harmful impact, learn from it and spark conversation to create a more inclusive future together. Disney is committed to com creating stories with inspirational and aspirational themes that reflect the rich diversity of the human experience around the globe. Yes. What so, say you? So, so, for example, uh, Dumbo has the infamous scene of the crows on the electrical wire, mm -hmm. and the head crow is named Jim. Hello, Jim Crow, which yep. is the Jim Crow laws, the uh, the basically the anti-black laws that were in effect for uh, like basically the, the the middle twentieth century. Yep. Um, Primarily in the it, South, but not necessarily everywhere, or not yeah, necessarily and, only and in the, the South. And the, well, yeah, and the and the the Crow characters themselves were caricatures of a stereotype of of black culture, black people, right? Yep. And um, for Disney to take the step to make an unskippable disclaimer in the front of these movies that have such depictions. Um, I, I think that's, um, I think it's warranted and I think it's bold. And the fact that they're not, they're, they're not going to edit these films, they're not going to, send them, to present them as they were originally presented, yep. but with the disclaimer up front saying, Hey, th this is a problem. Um, here, here it was, and here it is, and yeah. let's talk about it today. I, I think that's, um, I think that's a, a good thing. What, uh, what do you? Th on their page, this um, story, stories matter. The Walt Disney Company. Com, which again, where is Scotty? Um, <clears throat> it, they actually call themselves out on several movies. They, they, they don't say this is an inclusive list. This is a. A few examples of titles. That's their words. A few examples of titles. Aristocats, a uh, cat depicted as, as racist caricature of East Asian peoples with exaggerated stereotype. Um, Dumbo, like you just called out. Peter Pan. Uh, oh, yes. The Native American yep, depictions. Swiss yep. Family Robinson. Um, that one I don't remember the the thing, but yeah. The, the, okay. pir the pirates are, are basically generalized Asians with people acting in yellow face and with exaggerated accents oh, wow. and artificially slanted eyes, things like that. Ah, uh, that's yeah, that's a problem. Um, Coford says is song of the South coming back. I think that one's just too far gone, man. Dude, dude. No. I, yeah. I don't think song of the South. is. I, redeemed. I, I don't, I don't think a banner fixes that in any way, shape or form that, that movie mm -hmm. was, no, I. I've never actually seen that movie, but I've seen all the. Well, I've I've seen. I've so seen Disney, examples of all the all the relative depictions. Disney Channel back in the eighties, like when I when I was first exposed to the Disney Channel, so like eighties, 
yeah, probably like late eighties, maybe into the early nineties. The Disney used to have like little like vignettes based on their previous works. Mm -hmm. And I've seen many of the Disney channel vignettes based on song of the South. Right. So like, for example, like a quote music video of zippity doodah. Cause you know, the songs zippity doodah, zippity, that, like that's from that movie, right. you know? Uh, so they had these little, these little things that they would have like in their little like quote commercial breaks, even though they didn't have commercials on the Disney channel. Yep. Um, it, so that's my exposure to, I have not seen the movie from start to finish. Yep. Uh, so, I mean, it exists like the footage exists, but like it's, pro it, it, it's, it's so problematic. Like, you know what? It exists out there. If you really just need to see it, you can get it. Yep. But I understand and support Disney's position of not releasing Song of the South. Because it's, like you said, Amos, it's too far gone. Yep, yep. Uh, that, that, yeah, it was just... It's one thing to have things in a movie that depict people poorly and cultures poorly. It's another thing entirely to have a movie based entirely upon those poor depictions. Right. It, 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 that's yeah. just, that's a line too far. And then personally, there are some good songs and good moments in that movie, but. Right. So like, that's a, a sacrifice to the, like it's, it's a worthy sacrifice. Yep. Um, so as we mentioned at the top, I have been attending Podcast Movement 2020 virtual this this week, and I'll be doing the same thing next week. It's been pretty amazing. There's a lot of a lot of great stuff going on. Uh, different talks. I've been meeting up with uh, lots of different people. Today we had there was a uh, a group with um uh oh sh shit where's my note I I <laughs> lost it uh basically execs from all different companies uh podcast companies media companies. Software companies, mm -hmm. Adobe has uh, an entire booth, which is funny to think of in a digital sense. But what they've been doing is every couple hours is another presentation about stuff. Of course, Adobe Max is going on this weekend, so it kind of coincides with that, which uh, will probably be more impactful next week after all the Max stuff has been parsed through. Um, mm -hmm. Been able to ask developers questions about Audition. Audition is not coming to fucking iPad anytime soon because they can't figure out how to life, apparently. Uh, they can get, they can get, basically they said there's not enough money in it is really essentially what it comes down to. Like everything else was like, yeah, yeah we know yeah. web interfaces are hard. We, we get it. But yeah, the basic answer was there's not enough money, not enough demand for people to get it on iPad, um, which saddens me greatly. Sure. Um, yeah. One of the things that, that uh, happened today though with Adobe, if you have wanted to try out Adobe uh, uh, Creative Cloud, and you're like, you know, I'm not paying 300 and blah, blah, blah for a student or $600 for a year. You can get six months free, six months unfettered access to Adobe Cloud or Adobe Creative Cloud, all 51 apps by filling out a fucking survey. Just go and fill out dude. the survey. Like, that's dude, all you do. Uh, Adobe apps are a difference maker. If you're a creator, if you're a podcaster, if you're a YouTuber, like Adobe apps are like, they're like the industry standard. And yeah. if you've been using like free apps up to this point and in, in making do, like take advantage six months free. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Like <laughs> as, definitely. As the developer said, you get six months. If you don't, if you don't want to pay for it after that, you don't have to. If you can't learn it in six months, you probably don't need to use it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah that's right yeah um yeah uh no i agree with i i agree with bk in the in the chat the the subscription model is a pain but like that's what it, that's where everybody's going yeah. uh microsoft's going that way adobe's going that way like everybody yeah. like everything's a subscription these days and I, that's just a reality we have to deal with i pay for the subscription i am using my daughter's access to the school uh 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 Costs for the educational the, costs. The yes, the student discount. Yeah, the so student, it's uh, it's three sixty a year for me, and that's about the cheapest you can find it. So that's thirty bucks a month. But yeah, I like I've I've basically based my entire business. Audio Aperture Media is based around 
Adobe products in their integration with each other. And yes, yeah. it's a cost. No, I don't like paying it. But yes, I will continue to do so because it is worth it with the time that it saves over using Audacity. Yep. Uh, the regular updates, we just got another update to pretty much all the main programs this week with Adobe Max going on. And there are significant updates for the most part. Um, like I, I'm not, I'm not an advocate for for Adobe, but f for software in general, the companies that are doing it well, I just upgraded to RX8 Professional from RX7. It cost me five hundred dollars to upgrade, and that mm. fucking day, I went and used it to save myself four hours worth of work cleaning up some audio. Like, if you know how to use the tools and you have the resources to use them. They are amazing for what they do. Would I do it if I was if I was just a hobbyist? No, I'd still be pirating it like everybody else. But I'm not. <laughs> or know? using Audacity like I was. Oh, fuck Audacity. I'll, I'll, mm -mm. Yeah. E it's e e <laughs> even, even the Audacity guy on Podcast Movement was like, I don't know why people use this. I use it because I know how, to, how it works and it's free. But if you're just getting into podcasting, why would you use this software? And he was the advocate for Audacity. Like that tells you all you fucking need to know. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Yep. It's and not user friendly. <laughs> Gimp. Yeah. Yeah. Gimp's another one out there. Um, yep. No, no, there are, yeah. there are free ones out there, but I can take without leaving the Adobe uh, 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 ecosystem, I can create artwork from a photo that I took myself create a YouTube video from that using the audio from the recording that I received and never think twice about how the files are going to, I can do it. I can have everything on this computer here and then go to a, my laptop and be on the road over Wi-Fi and still fucking work on those files and not have to worry about what saved where or anything else. It just fucking works. And that to me is just awesome. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot to be said about about staying in an ecosystem, and that's great. Six months free, like check it out. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the I'm gonna throw the link in the. Um, yeah, I threw it in there once, but you can always go in there again. Yeah. And of course, it'll be on the show notes. Um, yeah, absolutely. It, it's it's literally it's it's a Google Forms uh, uh, survey. Like, it takes five minutes. You click, 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 done. Okay, you're on your fucking way. Yeah. So yeah. So so check that out. Um, um, that's cool. Hey, tell me about um, Zach into the future. Uh, what what are we talking about here? All right. <laughs> Saved by the Bell. You're a fan. Yes, I remember Saved by the Bell. I I had um, impure thoughts about some of the characters on that show back when I was in high school. Tiffany Amber Thiessen. Hey, I'm not naming names, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you, you've seen we've talked about this in pre-show you saw Zach Morris is trash Zach Morris is trash yeah the guy that created Zach Morris is trash gets a phone call one day from Mark Paul Gosler and who's Mark Paul Gosler uh, Mark Paul Gosler played Zach uh, on Saved by the Bell oh so the actual Zach, the actual Zach calls up the called, dude that uh, did Zach Morris's trash. And did he call him and braid him about his series? No, he called and said, Hey, you want to do a podcast where I rewatch this show called saved by the bell that I have never watched since it, 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 since it went off or since we stopped recording it 30 years ago. Oh, that's brilliant. That is Zach into the future. Oh, there man. are 12 episodes oh, in. They uh, they came wow. on podcast movement to talk about it today about their process and everything else. It sounds awesome. Um, they, they don't. They, I mean, they don't know when they're going to end it. They just know that it's going right now. They've got. They've already had uh, uh, the dude that, that plays Jesse Slater on there. Uh, they've had a few other other guests. They've had or other co stars. They've had crew directors, writers, all that stuff on the podcast. Um, Tiffany Amber Thiessen said she won't do it unless she can do it drunk. In which case. Uh, <laughs> Mark, Mark Paul was like, I could podcast drunk, so we're looking forward to that one happening. <laughs> I'm down to have Tip, Tipsy Hammer Thiessen on this show drunk. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's go. I, let's I, go. I wouldn't let you be drunk if Tiffany Amber Thiessen was on the show drunk. <laughs> <laughs> like, there are some lines that I know should not be crossed. <laughs> yeah, that show might go places. <laughs> <laughs> right to the slammer. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. I haven't listened to it yet. I heard the first three episodes are dry because they over edited the shit out of it, and then they kind of like let it breathe, and and that's part of the part of the process of what they were talking about today. Um, uh, nice. But I'm super looking forward to to, to listening to it. Uh, Mark Paul says that he watches the episode for the first time in 30 years on Saturday. Then he gets the notes from the other dude, and I can't remember his name. Uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Berkeley. There you go. That's the other one. That's the other co-host they got or co-star they got. Um, he watches it on a Saturday afternoon. He gets the his co-host notes on Sunday morning. He then re-watches the show with those notes in mind, adding some of his own notes, and then they record at 1 p.m. on Sunday Pacific time. So I am right now going to my podcatcher <laughs> to get this. <laughs> yeah. I need this in my life. I need this in my life. Um, yeah, no, that is fucking fantastic, dude. Like, I, I am, I've got such great memories of that show from when I was in high school, and then like the Zach Morris's trash YouTube channel that yep. has sprung up over the last couple of years is fucking brilliant. Um, I just like the whole thing is just is is so much fun. Yeah. Like I. I'm very much looking forward to checking this out. That's that's awesome. That so, is very cool. That that was the fun story for today. There, I mean, I've I've met so many awesome people. Some I'm uh, between trying to get people on this show just because I think they'd be fun to have and continue our our um, our conversation about uh, about discrimination and things like that. Like that's that's going to be a huge thing that I'm going to be tapping into so on, soon. Um, just overall, man, it's it's been a, it's been a great experience. I, I'm really looking forward to Nashville next year and going and being in person. That is awesome. That is awesome. Hey, and if you if you want to support Amos's trip to podcast movement next year, a great way to do that would be to go to patreon.com slash ritual misery. That would be a great idea. Uh, all the money from here until the end of the year goes to, uh, well, fr from here until the middle of December, because, you know, billing and times and all this billing stuff. cycles. Um, yes. but all that goes towards the streamathon, uh, raising money for sick kids at the end of the year. And, uh, I don't, I can't think of a better way to contribute. You show us that you support us and enjoy what we're offering as well as knowing that that money is uh, with a small it's Patreon getting... fee is going to get funneled right into the children's milk girl network anyway. So you're basically, you're giving us a big ego boost and helping us out, letting us continue on. And right. you're helping sick kids. Like how, what, what's fucking better than that? Man? Dude, that's, a, that's, that's the perfect merge of my world. Like help sick kids and give me an ego boost. Like I love both of those things. Like those are, fucking brilliant yeah um but also you go to <laughs> patreon.com slash ritual misery you also get some bonus material you get pre-shows and post shows and exclusive interviews and all kinds of like extra content yep. like just go do it if, if you want to can if you want to help sick kids like you could also get extra rmp content yep. so check it out patreon.com slash rmp discord or no wow sorry. patreon.com slash ritual misery that's it. That's it. I can say <laughs> two things. I got ahead of myself. Um, yeah, man. Um, hey, guess what, man? It's about that time. It's about that time. What time is it? Ken. He's all powerful. He's extraordinary. A genius. Game. I cannot contain myself. Ken's game. Presented by Stephen Cogswell. Woo! Thank you, Stephen Cogswell. All right, Kent. Uh, thank you for waiting until I gave you the, the indication that the stinger was over since you can't hear them tonight. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't actually hear it. Um, all right, man. Uh, today's game is called Escape from Anaheim. Oh, oh, shit. Um, instead of Escape from L.A., it's called Escape from Anaheim because this is about Disney. Uh, but more specifically, mm. my question for you okay. is the same all throughout this quiz. Is this a real Disney movie starring Kurt Russell? Okay. All right. So let me ask you this. Kurt Russell made a shitload of fucking movies for Disney as a teenager. Did, did you watch those when you were a kid? I know of three Kurt Russell movies. I believe two of them were Disney, and I don't think any of them were before he hit, hit the age of 30. 
Okay. All right. So this quiz is all about the movies that he made for Disney as a teenager and as an early 20 something. Are you ready? There's twin, there's two, or sorry, there are 10 movies that I'm going to name, and you're going to tell me if it's real or if it's some bullshit that I made up. Okay. All right. So, is this a real Disney movie starring Kurt Russell? The computer wore tennis shoes. Uh, that's anal excrement. So, you're saying it's not real? I'm saying that's something you pulled right out of your ass. You would be wrong! That is very much a real movie. And I just showed my son Lucas this movie about two months ago on Disney+. Plus. Oh my god. This is not a Disney Plus commercial, by the way. We are not sponsored. But Disney, if you want to sponsor us, we're available. Uh, yeah, The Computer War Tennis Shoes is about a, a, a teenager that uh, gets struck by lightning next to a computer, and then it's suddenly he knows all the world's knowledge. Yeah, that's that's how science works. Okay, next. Yes, all right, next movie. Now you see him, now you don't. Yes, that sounds that sounds like something Disney would have. Didn't he like have little peepholes in the showers or something in that movie? Oh my gosh. Uh, this movie I don't remember, but it is in fact real. So ding, 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 you got one. You got a point. Um, I don't remember this movie, so I'm not real sure on the plot of that one. Um, but our third one, our third one is called Mr. Fancy Pants. Mr. Fancy Pants. No. You are saying no, and you would be ding, 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 correct. That is not an actual one. I have a built-in timer. I have to answer these before the chat pops up with, with Coford's response. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. All right. So question number four. The strongest man in the world. Yes. You say that's real. Do sure. you know do you have for a fact? Or is that are you guessing at this point? I'm completely guessing. Okay. Well, I, I can tell you I have seen this movie. And I think he's. I think Kurt Russell is playing the same character that he played in uh, the computer wears tennis shoes, um, or at least the the principal of the school is the same. I I, I know that for sure. Uh, man, I wish I knew the actor's name. Uh, but yeah, the the principal of the school, like he's an iconic character. Like he should be like in the canon of pop culture. He's uh, he's fantastic. Okay, so. You got lucky and you got that one right. All right, moving on to the next one. I'll be a monkey's uncle. Sure. Uh, sure, it's a real movie? Yes. Yes, let's go with real. Yeah, you would be incorrect. I made that one up. I thought it sounded like a good name for a movie that Kurt Russell probably would have Number six, that boy sure is something. These are the worst movies ever. Yes. <laughs> you say yes, and you would be wrong again. I made up that boy sure is something. Uh, but again, that sounds very much 1960s Disney. All right. Uh, number seven, happy go lucky. Yes. Eh, you'd be wrong yet again. I fooled you three times in a row. Uh, that is not a movie that Jesus. Disney put Kurt Russell in. <laughs> All right. Moving on to number eight. The Barefoot Executive. Yes. Yes? Yes. Actor okay, yes. Yes, you got that one correct. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> The Barefoot Executive is real. I don't have context on that one either because I don't remember that movie. The next one is, Mom, will you bake me a cake? Yes. You say yes, and the survey says no. That's another bullshit title that Kent made up. 
I based that title off of a, a short film that I saw a long time ago called Dad, Can I Borrow the Car? Which I thought for the longest time was Kurt Russell. And then when I watched it as an adult, I realized that is definitely not Kurt Russell. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was the same era of Disney programming. Mm. Um, all right. in your final question, the fox and the hound. Is this a real Disney movie starring Kurt Russell? The Fox and the Hound. Starring Kurt Russell or starring young Kurt Russell? Is this a real Disney movie starring Kurt Russell? Yes. Ding, ding, ding. You got it correct. But he was not young when it came out. (laughs) Uh, He was less young. He's a lot younger than he... He's probably... Less than half his age now. Right. Because that movie came out in 94? No. That was... Whoa. No. Oh, no. You're you're seeing The Fox and the Hound. That is... Yeah. This is like 70s or something. This is like longer. Way old. Um, Yeah. So, you got five out of ten. Right. That means that you failed to get the D. Uh, I mean, sometimes you just don't need it. Yeah. Well... You didn't get it. <laughs> you did not get the How DM. anticlimactic that was. Um, <laughs> oh, we got some cheers from the Coford. Thank you, BK. Five bits for five incorrect answers. I, I assume that's how that goes. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Um, yeah, is this a Mikey quiz? No, I'm not as I'm not as brilliant as Mikey. Uh, I hope to be one day. I aspire. I I have aspirations. Um, hey, dude, it's about time for uh, for this. This is Margaret Weiss, and you're listening to Ritual Misery Podcast. Bye. There we go. Did uh, it play? It did. It didn't record anywhere. I'll have to add it later. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, yeah. So what you podcast, what podcast listeners heard, but the live viewers did not hear, was the bumper that Margaret Weiss recorded for us, uh, which basically said, uh, I, I'm Margaret Weiss and you're listening to the ritual misery podcast. Uh, Margaret, White, who's Margaret Weiss? You ask Margaret Weiss is a guest on ritual misery from like the 40 something episode of like early ritual misery. Uh, not only that, uh, she was the biggest get to date for Amos and me. She is one of our heroes. She is one of our uh, most uh, re- not renowned. What am I trying to say? Um, one of our most celebrated creators that that Amos and I care about. She is the co-creator of. The Dragonlance campaign setting for Dungeons and Dragons, yep. not only as a campaign setting, but more importantly, in fact, as a as an author, as a uh, uh, prose writing uh, person. Right. Uh, um, episode forty six, by the way. Forty six from twenty fifteen, August twenty sixth of twenty fifteen. Episode. Look 46. that up, folks. Look that up, folks. That was a that was a wonderful uh, interview that we had with Margaret Weiss, um, and I, much to my shame and my renown, I made Margaret c- cry during that episode <laughs> uh, because I asked a question about Sturm Brightblade. So for you nerds. You will know why she cried. Um, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. If you don't, download the episode 46 of the Ritual Misery podcast. Or just uh, read the Dragonlance Chronicles. Yeah, or that. Um, Probably less painful. Why, why, are, why are we bringing up Margaret Weiss? Like, what? why? Why? Like, today, in 2020, we... why, why is she relevant to the nerddom? You, we have been asking for more Dragonlance, especially written by Margaret Weiss and or Tracy Hickman for years. We did get some not too long ago. I'm reading them now. The, uh, the Amber and Stone or uh, Amber and Iron, Amber and 
Yeah, those are a couple of years old now at this point. Yeah, yeah, uh, they're they're a few years old. We, um, we, we want a capstone. We want a capstone of the Dragonlance saga. Yep. The Dragonlance saga that began in the 1980s, the the authors, Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman, they are they're at the twilight of their career. They're ready to retire for real. They've been writing and creating for for decades at this point. Yep. And they want to put a capstone on the Dragonlance saga that they created that was so fucking popular and brought so many people into the, the Dungeons and Dragons uh, uh, system, the, the Dungeons and Dragons Fold. community, right? Yep. Uh, they want they want to capstone that before they retire. Well, they were going to. What happened? Uh, Wizards of the Coast decided... Um, Nah, we're just going to cancel this contract for a trilogy that we have for you after you've already turned in the first transcript and started working on the second transcript that was worth upwards of $10 million or so. Um, yeah, just we're just going to cancel all that because uh, it's Tuesday. Yeah, so... Okay, so, so Margaret and Tracy wrote a full novel and had transcripts for the other two that they had submitted to, to wizards of the coast, which is the owner of dungeons and dragons. The original uh, owner was TSR, but they're, now they're the owner, owners of the Dragonlance uh, IP as well. Yeah, exactly. That, yeah. that, that was my point. Even though like, even though Margaret and Tracy created Dragonlance, it was under the, um, the corporate umbrella of TSR. So it became IP of TSR, which is the coast came in, bought TSR and all the IP that belonged to them. So Dragonlance now owns is, is now owned by wizards of the coast. So they dictate whether or not novels can be published or any IP whatsoever can be published as Dragonlance. Yep. Uh, so the Dragonlance creators the aforementioned Margaret and Tracy, um, the mercy of Wizards of the Coast. Wizards of the Coast contracted Margaret and Tracy to create a trilogy, a capstone trilogy of Dragon Dragonlance, so that not only they could sell those books, but they could also create source material, so source books and campaign setting uh, materials yep. for their their Dungeons and Dragons property. Um yeah, and then they Wizards of the Coast said uh thanks but no thanks. Wizards of the, the Coast was facing some issues. Uh Wizards of the Coast, Hasbro, whatever, whichever entity it was, as, oh, yeah. as Wizards of the Coast is a subsidiary of Hasbro. Yeah, as Coford said, Wizards went downhill after after Hasbro bought them, and that's legit. Um sure, sure. they they basically they were facing some backlash over some racial and uh, s some uh, uh, misogynistic undertones from previous books by other properties. Uh, nothing right. in, in the Dragonlance saga was listed, although I'm sure there's some examples in there in the medieval setting that it's it's rife with racism, uh, like literal racism, not human uh, anti-humanism, but um, and misogyny and things like that. So. Sure. Uh, some of the other campaigns were facing that and wizards decided to cancel all future projects. Uh, and they did so in a way that was not, uh, it was not congruent to a positive relationship with Margaret and, and Tracy. And, uh, after some, some reattempts to negotiate Margaret and Tracy sued are suing the shit out of wizards of the coast for contract, uh, for, for blatant contract breach. And like a few other little aspects of it, but yeah, they basically they're taking him to court. Yeah, um, yeah. As a fan of Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman, as a person that has talked to Margaret Weiss and uh, chatted with her on Twitter and things like that, like she is a lovely person, and this is a an amazing uh, project that they were they were trying to take on and do. Um, yeah. Go fuck yourself, Hasbro wizards, wizards of the Hasbro. Dude, so what What they need to do, what Hasbro slash Wizards of the Coast need to do is either say, oops, we fucked up, which is preferable. 
oops, we fucked up. Not only are we going to publish these materials, we're also going to create all of these additional Dragonlance materials for Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and also give Margaret and Tracy an extensive fucking bonus and raise uh, for their materials. Or, or, or release them from their contract and give Dragonlance as an IP, give it to Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman so they can do with it as they please. One or the other. The first one being the preferable one because I want Dragonlance materials, new Dragonlance materials to be published as Dungeons and Dragons material. Right. But if you just can't do that, then fucking release them and release Dragonlance so that Margaret and Tracy can have their capstone and give the fans what we really, really want. Now, when we talked to Margaret, she had uh, her own publishing company. Of course, she, well, Weiss Publishing LLC or whatever is basically her little thing like Audio Aperture Media is for me. It's just a, a tax. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. And, 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 and she she published the uh, uh, the Firefly RPG under her banner. Right. Well, they had another one, and it was something stone, something like, I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, I don't have it really. But that know. company had an open license with the caveat of non-compete and non-narrative for Dragonlance. Mm-hmm. They could create Dragonlance material, source material. They couldn't compete with anything that TSR, well, that the Wizards was doing, and they couldn't publish novels. They couldn't narrate a story around it, although they could provide all the source material, and they did. They provided tons of source material for 3. Point, well, I guess it was 4.0 at the time, which nobody nobody used. Um, uh, but now but now that is ended. If they would just, just release Dragonlance or fulfill this this contract with I'm mean, preferably fulfill the contract with Margaret and Tracy and let them go yeah. through with it and then you can do yeah. whatever the fuck you want with dragging this because it didn't it will no longer matter after Margaret and Tracy have their say to end it yep. Um, yep. yep yeah 4e was the tabletop pretending to be Diablo uh <laughs> sure I I it's not that's not the game that I would have picked but yes the spirit is there um fourth, <laughs> fourth edition was in Dungeons and Dragons fourth edition was Cotton candy uh, in a in a hot field. Um, uh, yeah, fifth edition is much much better. Uh, I, I mean, I'm still gonna I'm still gonna miss three point five the rest of my life, but whatever. I'm old, <clears throat> so yeah that that's that's where all this is going. And this is be you something... just want you just want second edition with Thacko. Like you want no. you want like, you want to shove down my throat that I can't understand Thacko. It's it's <laughs> it's Thaco, but no. <laughs> see see right there <laughs> um no and, and this is something we're going to continue to watch in the future and hopefully we'll be able to keep it up on uh keep up on on things that are going on with it but this is uh yeah so so what i want you guys to do is tell us your favorite Dragonlance or dungeons and dragons novel uh narrative story not not a game that you played but what novel did you read? What story out of those novels? What overarching yeah. storyline from novels did you yeah. get that that just changed the way you think about uh, the fantasy genre, your own life, or just any aspect there between? Absolutely, and that's regardless if it's Dragonlance or Forgotten Realms or um, uh, uh, what is the um, Ravenloft. Uh, sh- Ravenloft, thank you. It was the the uh, Strahd and and Lord Soth and all of the things. Regard, regard, or great. What's the one gray something or another? Greyhawk. Um, Greyhawk. Yes, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> or any of those four, or any other D and D settings that had novels uh, yep. set to them. Um, like yep. absolutely. Like if you if you have opinions on any of those like please. email us podcast at ritual misery.com or tweet there. us at ritual misery on twitter let us know that's right yeah amos and uh if somebody just wants like to pick a bone with something that you said during this show where would they go oh uh right to hell but you can also find me on twitter <laughs> 
<laughs> at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. How about you, Kent? Yeah, RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. I'm pretty much Del Noche or Del Noche seventy seven everywhere else. Yeah. Uh, but but Twitter's where where that's where it's at. <laughs> you can find the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery R I T U A L M A S E R Y, and of I'm, course. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to interact with me directly in real time, you probably need to go to bit.ly slash RMP discord and interact with me there on discord. Yeah. Another great place that you can post your stories, uh, right in there. Um, and of course you can find all these links and more ways to support the show at ritualmisery.com slash support. Hell yeah. We are live every Thursday at 7 PM Pacific on diamondclub.tv. Except this Thursday. Right. Yeah, except for this one. Except for um, Thursdays. But more importantly, twitch.tv slash ritual misery. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Uh, thank you for listening. For Kent, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. Love you guys. See ya. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, I love the Brandy emote. Oh, that's great. Because I can't hear the things, is the songs over? Are we done? No? Okay. I'm leaving all that in, by the way. <laughs> like, I was even trying to flash you down, but of course you don't watch the video. Otherwise, you'd known that half, the, half this episode I was trying to talk at the same time you were. Oh, Kent, Kent, Kent. Oh, Amos, Amos, Amos. The more drunk you get, the more can't you get. That's all I'm going to say. Well, yeah, I mean, the more Amos you get, the more Amos you are. You know, the more Amos I get, the more drunk you need to be. (laughs) That's okay. Yeah, that's that. Not a truer thing has ever been spoken.